Hello and thank you for watching. It is so nice to be in your home. I'm Pastor Jim Doherty and I pray wherever you're listening around the world that God would speak to you in this message and draw you closer to Jesus Christ. Let's pray as we go to the Word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask now that you would bless your Word. We lift up Jesus Christ, that you would be glorified and magnified and exalted. I pray if there's anyone listening that does not yet know Jesus Christ, that in this broadcast that they would come to know you as their Lord and as their Savior. I pray for those that do know you, that we would grow closer to you and grow in relationship with you and grow in knowledge of you. And I pray as we draw near to you, Lord Jesus, that you would draw near to us. Speak to us now through the power of the Holy Spirit of God. We thank you. We give you praise and honor and glory as we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I heard a funny story of a seven-year-old boy that missed church on Easter Sunday. And on that particular Sunday, the church was having an Easter play. And so he was sleeping in and his parents get home and he says, so what happened at church, mom? And she says, well, sweetheart, you missed a great Easter play. And there was so much costumes and so many awesome, you know, arrangements there that you missed. And she said, even Jesus, you know, who resurrected showed up right at the end. And, and we just all clapped as a crowd. And the young seven-year-old boy says, wait a minute, Jesus showed up. The day that I do not go to church, Jesus shows up. <laughs> As we go to the Word of God today, I want you to recognize the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ because without the power, without the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we will not be resurrected one day as a believer. But I'm so grateful that Jesus Christ was risen from the dead. He is risen and He has risen forevermore. And He is a resurrection and the life. He who believes in Him, though they may die, they will live again. I think about some people that the Lord raised back to life in Scripture. I think about the, the widow's son of Luke chapter 7. We know that the, the funeral procession was going on there. And in verses 11 through 17, we read that the actual procession in verse 12, a funeral procession was coming out as he approached the village. The young man who had died was a widow's only son and the loud, large crowd from the village was with her. When the Lord saw her, he had, he, his heart overflowed with compassion. Thank you, Jesus, that his heart is compassionate for those that go through death, that those families that go through hardship and have a loss of a loved one. Let me just say, if your family is in Jesus Christ, there is no loss there because they're in the presence of God because absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. But Jesus said here to the crowd and he said to her specifically, he says, don't cry. He said, then he walked over to the coffin and he touched it and the, the bearers stopped. And he said, young man, I tell you, get up. And the Bible says in the boy, the dead boy sat up and began to talk. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Wow, what a funeral. Because Jesus has a power to resurrect the dead. He is a resurrection and the life he himself resurrected. And later in this message, we'll talk about that. But Jesus resurrects and he has a power to resurrect people. And right here, this young boy that died, he raised him back to life at a funeral. Amazing what our God does and is able to do, but that's what God is. He's, a, he's amazing. He's powerful. There's nothing like our God. There's no one like our God. In Luke chapter 8, we read the story of Jairus' daughter that the Lord indeed healed and brought back to life. He restored her and brought her back to life as she died, a 12-year-old. Luke chapter 8, we see in verse 49, specifically, while he was still speaking to her, a messenger arrived from the home of Jairus, the, the leader of the synagogue. He told him, your daughter is dead. There's no use to trouble the teacher now. But when Jesus heard what had happened, he saw Jairus and he said, don't be afraid. He says, just have faith. She will be healed. When they arrived at the house, Jesus wouldn't let anyone go in with him except Peter, James, John, and the little girl's father and mother. The house was filled with people weeping and wailing, but he said, stop the weeping. She isn't dead. She's only asleep. Only Jesus can say that. 
You and I go to a funeral and see somebody that's passed away or they're dead and we can't wake them up. But Jesus can because they're sleeping according to him. And he was able to wake up this young 12-year-old girl. And it says in verse 53, but the crowd laughed at him because they all knew that she had died. Then Jesus took her by the hand and said in a loud voice, my child, get up. Thank you, Jesus. And at that moment, her life returned and she immediately stood up. Then Jesus told them to give her something to eat. Her parents were overwhelmed, but Jesus insisted that they do not tell anyone what had happened. But the power of God was revealed right there. Amazing. Jesus healed this woman, this, this woman and this man's child, this, this Jairus' daughter. Amazing. Our God is able to resurrect the, those that are dead. They can come back to life. Amazing what God can do in the life of people. Because he is a resurrection in the life. And the power of the resurrection is evident because Jesus Christ can resurrect the dead. Thank you, Lord. But we see in John 11, the the shortest verse in the Bible, a powerful verse, Jesus wept. Why did he weep? Because Lazarus, his dear friend, had died. And as you know, if you read the story that Lazarus, he was literally dead for four days. And Jesus arrived on scene and he he ultimately went there and he literally healed and he brought that man out of the tomb, Lazarus. As he said in that text, Lazarus come forth. And Lazarus, who was in his grave clothes, he got up and he walked out and he was brought back to life. But I believe Jesus wept and I believe Jesus wept because his friend died And he weeps with those who go through hardships of losing a loved one. But I believe Jesus wept here because he also knew that Lazarus would need to die again, unfortunately. But would you weep if you were in the presence of God in heaven? Wouldn't that make you weep to go back to earth? I think so. But Jesus wept here and he wept because he saw the sorrow. He saw what happened and he ultimately He has the power to to heal and the power to resurrect and the power to raise the dead. And we see that as Jesus did that in this man's life, Lazarus, in John chapter 11. And amazingly, what what Jesus does, he raises the, the, the dead and he can do that. And I'm so grateful that we serve a God that is able to restore, that is able to heal, that is able to bring life to death. Those that have died, he can bring life to them. A powerful thing. And verse 20, 33 of chapter 11 of John, when Jesus saw her weeping and saw the other people welling with her, a deep anger welled up with him and, and he was troubled, deeply troubled. He had compassion. If you look at the stories of the Bible, Jesus has compassion on people. He cares what you go through. He cares when you've had a death in the family. I remember a couple of years ago when my dad passed away. He was on life support for five weeks. And it was so hard to see a loved one, my dad, in that situation. But I rejoiced because I knew that if he died, he was going to go into the presence of God. And he would not be in that hospital bed anymore because he would be healed by Jesus Christ. And indeed, that's what happened. My dad actually died in the car, cardiac arrest. And they brought him You know, they shocked his body and he came back on the third shock. And you know what? I believe ultimately the Lord allowed it so that he can say goodbye to us as his children and family because he was in the hospital and he can hear because every time I would talk to him, his heartbeat would go up and his breathing would go up and my family, the same thing because he could hear even though he couldn't communicate with us because he had brain damage. I believe he could still hear what was going on. And five weeks later, he would die and go be with the Lord Jesus. But even there, I was thinking, you know what? God healed him because he's in the presence of God and he's not sick anymore and he's not in that bed anymore because the Lord has restored him. And the Lord is, he's with Jesus, never to face cardiac arrest again, never to face heart issues again. In the Doherty family, we face heart issues issues. But you know what? My God is a creator of my heart and my God is able to do great things. And I trust him with my body and my life. And I'm praying for my family as well. But you know what the fact is, is 
Every day is a gift from God. Use every day to glorify Him. And if the Lord takes you home, give Him the glory, and because you're going to get to see Him face to face. Thank you, Jesus. And so Jesus, He was troubled at, at seeing. He was angry and troubled within His heart. And so in verse 39 of John 11, He says, Roll the stone aside. And, but Martha said, the, uh, Mar But Martha, the dead man's sister, protested, Lord, he has been dead four days. The smell will be terrible. The stench will be terrible. Jesus responded, didn't I tell you that you would see the glory of God if you believe? So they rolled the stone aside. Then Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, thank you for hearing me. You always hear me, but I said it out loud for the sake of those standing here, these people standing here, so that they will believe that you sent me. Then Jesus shouted, Lazarus, come out. Lazarus, come forth. Powerful. The word of God right here. And the Bible says that the dead man came out, and his hands and feet were bound in grave clothes, his face wrapped in head cloth. Jesus told them, unwrap him and let him go. Amazing. That's what Jesus can do. He can raise the dead back to life. He can heal. He can restore. There's nothing impossible with Jesus. He is God. And He's able. But we also see Tabitha in the book of Acts chapter 9, a godly woman of God that took care of those that were poor. And she died. And ultimately, Peter, the Lord used him to minister and, and go up. And, and he said, get up. He said immediately, get up to this woman. And the Bible says that Tabitha arose up and she got up. Amazing that it wasn't Peter that did that. It was God. God is the one that raises the dead back to life. But thank God that Peter was available to be used of God, to go and minister in this circumstance as the women of that of chapter 9 of Acts were literally cleaning up Tabitha's body and she was upstairs the Lord brought her back to life. God is a restorer of life. He's a giver of life. Amazing what God can do. But then we see in John chapter 20, the, the resurrection of Jesus Christ himself as he resurrected back to life. In John chapter 20, we read in verse 1, Early on Sunday morning, while, at, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and found that the stone had been rolled away from the entrance. She ran and found Simon Peter and the other disciple, the, the one whom Jesus loved. She said, they have taken the Lord's body out of the tomb. We don't know where they have put him. Peter and the other disciple started out for the tomb. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. The Bible says in verse 6, Then P Simon Peter arrived and went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there, while the cloth that had covering covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. Then the, the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in, and he saw and believed. What a powerful testimony of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. For until then, they had, still hadn't understood the scriptures that Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. What a powerful thing. They're seeing the evidence right in front of their eyes that the stone has been rolled away. That the linen cloths that was put on the body of Jesus is lying there folded. And Jesus is not there in the tomb anymore. But where do we find him? In verse 11 of chapter 20, he appears to Mary Magdalene as Mary Magdalene thought that she was talking to the gardener. And when Jesus said to her, Mary, she says, My Lord, Re Rabboni, teacher. And then she tried to cling to Jesus and he says, Don't yet cling to me. I have not yet ascended to my father. But go and tell my brethren that I've risen from the dead. And then he appeared to his disciples in the, in the room as the doors were locked. As Jesus was in his resurrected body, he was able to walk through walls. And it, nothing, he, he could walk through even locked doors because there was no 
nothing to hold him from going from place to place. And ultimately, he was in his resurrected state, resurrected body. And amazingly, he appeared there. But then I think about Thomas, who was a skeptic of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. He says that as the 12 disciples in verse 24, one of the 12 disciples nicknamed the twin was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. So the other apostles were saying, look, we've seen Jesus, the resurrected Jesus. But look what he said here in verse 25. Thomas says, I will not believe unless I see the nail wounds in his hands and put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound in his side. Eight days later, later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. The doors were locked, but suddenly, as before, Jesus standing among them. And this is what he said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. Powerful. He said, put your finger here. Put your finger here in my side. Put your finger here. Amazing. He, he's given them... He's given Thomas, who was a skeptic, the opportunity to see the physical body resurrected of Jesus Christ. This is a resurrected body of Jesus. Put your hand here. Put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand in my wound and my side. Don't be faithless any, mo any longer, Jesus said to him. Believe. And I love the response of Thomas, and this should be the response of every human being. As you hear the gospel of Jesus Christ, as you hear the resurrection of Jesus Christ, I pray that this would be your reaction today. But the reaction that Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus said to him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who, have, who believe yet have not seen me. Thank you, Jesus, that he is alive. Jesus is a resurrection. He is alive. Thomas got to see him. The apostles, the disciples got to see him. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, and he says, I pass on to you what was most important and what had also been passed to me. Christ died for our sins, just as he said. He was buried and he arose from the, he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as the scripture said. He was seen by Peter and then by the 12. And after that, he was seen by more than 500 of his followers at one time. Most of whom are still alive, though some have died. But look what Paul says in verse 7. Then he was seen by James and later by the apostles. Last of all, Paul says, as though I have been born out at the wrong time, I also saw him. What a powerful thing, as we know that Paul was a persecutor of the church before he came to know Jesus Christ, being Saul at that time. On the Acts chapter 9, he met Jesus, and Jesus asked him, why are you persecuting me? But after he got right with God, he saw Jesus. Amazing. But even in the process, you know, the Lord himself appeared to him on the Damascus road, and he came to know Jesus. Paul says, for I am the least of all the apostles. In fact, I'm not even worthy to be called an apostle after the way I persecuted God's church. But whatever I am now, it's because of God poured out his special favor on me and not without results. For I have worked harder than any of the other apostles. Yet it was not I, but God who was working through me by his grace. Thank you, Jesus, that you can change someone like the apostle Paul. And he can experience the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And his life was radically changed. Romans 1.16, Paul said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. It is a power of God unto salvation to all that believe, to the Jew first and also to the Gentile. Listen, Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. He is alive. Our faith is not in vain. Jesus Christ has risen. And as you've seen in the Bible, Jesus has the power to resurrect the dead, to bring the dead back to life. Some of you are watching right now, and you are dead in your sins, as the Bible says in Ephesians 2. 
and you are dead in your trespasses, but you need to come alive in Jesus Christ. I want you to know that Jesus Christ died for you, that he was buried, and he arose again from the dead, and he can come into your life right now, and you can be forgiven of all your sins, and you can be resurrected, so to speak, and live a new life in Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ can live inside of you, and you can come alive in him, and you can live for him, and he can live through you, the new life that God has called you to as a believer and as a follower of Jesus Christ. You say, Pastor Jim, I want to get right with God. I want my sins forgiven. I want to know that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven. I want to experience the power of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You need to put your faith in Jesus Christ. You need to repent of your sins and turn to Christ. As the Bible says in Acts 3.19, to turn from your sins and turn to Christ, that times of refreshment will come from the presence of the Lord. The Bible says we've all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We've all broken God's commandments. We've all broken what God has told us not to do. All of us as humanity has sinned before God. And we need salvation only found in Him. And we need a Savior. And Jesus Christ is the Savior of mankind. As John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through me. Listen, you need Jesus. You need your sins forgiven. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. You don't have to go to hell. You can be forgiven of your sins and on your way to heaven by putting your faith in Jesus Christ right now. I believe the Holy Spirit of God is speaking to hearts and lives right now. I believe the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead, the Holy Spirit of God is speaking and he's moving upon hearts. As you've heard the message today, the gospel is that Jesus saves the gospel, that you can be saved today and you can be saved from the penalty of your sins and you can be on your way to heaven. You don't have to be on your way to hell. The bad news is we've broken God's commandments. We've sinned and we deserve the wrath of God. But God in his mercy sent his son for us to die on the cross. And Romans 5, 8 says, but God demonstrated his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I want to invite you to get right with God. As the Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you believe in your heart that God has raised his son, Jesus from the dead, you will be saved. You can experience a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Would you like to do that? Would you like to get right with God and know that your sin is forgiven and know that you know that you know that you would go to heaven? Would you pray with me? Would you get right with God right now? Whatever you're doing, I'm going to ask you to just take a moment. This is your eternal destination right here, right now. Make that choice and put your faith in Jesus Christ and give your life to him and ask God to forgive you of your sins. Repent of them. Turn from them right now. Pray with me to receive Jesus Christ and get right with God right now. Pray this prayer now and mean it from your heart. Pray this prayer now. Lord Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God who died on that cross 2,000 years ago for me. Jesus, be my Savior, my Master, my God, and my Lord. I put my faith in Jesus Christ who is the resurrection and the life. I ask you to forgive me of my sins as I repent of them and turn from them and put my faith in Jesus Christ now to save me. Thank you for forgiving me. Thank you for calling me and having a plan and purpose for my life. But God, I want to live for you. Jesus, live inside of me. I turn from my wickedness of sin and I want you to live inside of me and I want to come alive spiritually in Jesus Christ and Lord live inside of me and help me to live as a Christian now. Thank you for accepting me and calling me and having a purpose from this day forward. Jesus live inside of me because you are alive and you are well. Come in and live inside of me Jesus. I put my faith in Jesus Christ. Put my Name, please, Lord, in the book of life in heaven. I ask this in Jesus' name that you would cleanse me from all my sins by the blood that you shed on the cross. Thank you for your blood that you shed over 2,000 years ago at Calvary. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen.
If you just prayed that prayer, would you call me right now? 1-800-973-5543. 1-800-973-5543. Go to the phone right now. Let me know that you got right with God, that you gave your life to Jesus Christ. 1-800-973-5543. You see it on the screen. Call right now. I'd love to hear from you. 1-800-973-5543. You can also go online at power2change.org. I look forward to hearing from you of the decision that you've made. Listen, if you would like to support our ministry, we're a 501c3 nonprofit corporation. Power to Change Crusades is taking the gospel around the world, and we can use your faithful contributions monthly or even a one-time gift that can help us take this gospel like this on the airwaves and other places around the world. Would you pray for us? Would you support us? Would you stand with us? Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening in. I look forward to seeing you on our next broadcast. But before I go, thank you, Jesus, that you are alive. Thank you, Lord, that you are risen from the dead and death cannot hold you. And I thank you that now you live. And once again, one day as we die as a Christian, you said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though they may die, they will live again. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. I look forward to seeing you again. God bless you, and I look forward to, to having you on our next broadcast. Thank you, and tune in next time. And I look forward to hearing of what God is doing in your life. Let us know. Write us. Email us. Call us. I look forward to hearing from you. God bless you and keep you.